Coming up on Headline News, President Biden speaks with Russian President Putin. But first, updates on the Olympics and Super Bowl. Stay tuned and informed on this week's Headline News. This past week, we've seen two amazing sporting events. We brought in JBCN sports commentator Peyton Nelson to talk about both these events. Hi, I'm Peyton Nelson, and welcome to this week's sports headline. This past weekend, the Los Angeles Rams defeated the Cincinnati Bengals in Super Bowl 56. The Rams got off to a hot start, but once their star wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr., left the game with a knee injury, the Bengals started to take over until the end of the third quarter. Once the fourth quarter started, the Rams picked up momentum and eventually would seal their victory with a touchdown pass to wide receiver and Super Bowl MVP, Cooper Cup. The final score of the game was 23-20, giving the Rams their second NFL title as a franchise. This pa these past couple weeks, the 2022 Winter Olympic Games have been taking place in Beijing. As of now, Norway leads the medal count with a total of 29 medals with 14 of them being gold. In second place, Germany has a total of 22 medals, with 10 of those being gold. And behind them, Team USA with a total of 21 medals, with 8 of those being gold. As of Monday, pitchers and catchers were supposed to report to spring training for this up-and-coming baseball season. Unfortunately, that didn't happen due to the ongoing MLB lockout. According to ESPN, talks will resume today to try to get the league back up and running before the season starts. That's all for this week's sports headline. Be sure to tune in next week for all your sports updates. Thank you, Peyton. On February 12th, President Biden called Russian President Putin to discuss a potential invasion of the Ukraine. To find out more about the situation, we called in political science professor Dr. Christy Siver to talk about what this call means. Dr. Siver has a background in international relations. Take a look at that sit-down right now. The phone call between Biden and Putin about the risks of an invasion of Ukraine suggests that the situation is very serious. There are U.S. negotiators on the ground in the region, working with our regional partners, likely speaking with lower level officials in Russia, to try and stop an invasion. But the fact that Biden wanted this phone call with Russia and insisted that it be on the weekend, instead of waiting until Monday as Russia proposed, suggests that the U.S. thinks an invasion is both likely and imminent. So the president really wanted to take this opportunity personally to convey to Vladimir Putin the seriousness of U.S. resolve and the importance of the kinds of sanctions and kinds of responses Russia would face if they undertake an invasion. So this is, I think, common for U.S. presidents to try to take action when they see foreign policy issues rise to the seriousness of which this situation in Ukraine has risen. Um, U.S. presidents often like to hold off on participating personally in negotiations until it's clear that a negotiation can be reached. Donald Trump broke with this in his uh, meetings with uh, North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, and that actually backfired because it was very unfortunate for Kim Jong-un to return to North Korea without a serious agreement. So we've seen that when, when presidents get involved, the stakes are very high. So I think this, again, conveys that once the president feels that they need to personally get involved in the situation, that the, the, the situation is perceived as, as very high risk. In my expertise, I feel that Americans should expect that this situation isn't going to go away. 
We've seen in recent news that Russia is moderating its position, but we're also getting a lot of mixed signals from Russia. I think we have to expect that the situation in Ukraine is likely to drag on if we, even if we don't see a full-scale invasion by Russia. And I think there's a fairly good chance that Russia will use its cyber weapon capability, perhaps on some of Ukraine's allies. So I think the Americans should stay attuned to this situation. And again, President Biden has urged any Americans in Ukraine to leave, which again suggests the situation is very serious. As of yet, I don't think Americans can expect to see the United States sending troops into Ukraine. But if the situation escalates, I think it's likely that the U.S. is going to be more and more involved in trying to resolve this situation. Uh, President Biden has made it very clear that the United States and its other Western allies will stand with the with Ukraine's democracy. And so it's this situation is not going to be resolved by meeting Putin's demand. This situation is going to be solved through creative uh, appeals to try and give Russia some off-ramps to avoid war. Thank you for joining us. I'm Connor Williams, and this is JBCN Headline News.